everyone and welcome to Tracy's Place. I hope you all are doing well on this beautiful Monday or whatever day you're watching this video on. Um, a lot of people have been asking me to get back to some of the videos that I used to make and I used to do a segment called Marriage Mondays and since today is Monday I said well I'll take this opportunity to do that um, especially since this past weekend we were watching TV me and my husband were watching TV and I saw um, Medea's Big Happy Family. And so we was watching, you know, laughing and going on. And they got to this sit down part. And um, Medea was saying things about um, some of the, the couples that were in the, on the stage play. I watched the stage play, actually. And so um, they were talking to these couples. Most of them were middle aged couples. And so he was telling them about, you know, the dangers of divorce at middle age. And a lot of people think that they are are exempt or either they've made it past the mark of divorce or if they've reached 50, 55, they think they're safe, you know, from divorce. And that's just not the case. He started listing out different things uh, that are divorce triggers from the age of 40 to 50. But I started thinking about it. I said, you can go kind of past that age. People nowadays are getting divorced up to 60. Um, so it's not an unusual thing to hear about people getting a divorce now. And it's really sad. So I decided to make a video. I said, let me, you know, clue people in because not everyone knows the dangers of divorce at this age so I'll name some that he named or Tyler Perry being Medea <laughs> I'll name a couple of them that he did and then there are some that I've noticed just from being married I'm in my 40s to 50 range and people that are you know around me you know I see that there are triggers and you know different things plaguing couples nowadays so I just lumped them all together and I'm going to give them to you now number one the teenage years. If you have not stayed connected in those early years and you've kind of just drifted off as the children aged and you thought that they were the priority and you were always seeing about the children and now they've gotten into their teenage years or late teenage stages and uh, you haven't stayed connected with your spouse, you haven't dated your spouse, you know, you haven't just, you know, been invested in each other. These teenage years can wreak havoc on a marriage. With all the things that they're going through, it can wreak havoc on you. And then, if you've passed the teenage stage and you're in those empty nester years, oh my goodness, you can just not know who that other person is. So it is very important to stay connected to your spouse because if you go from ages of infancy on up to when they leave the house and you've put the priority on them and other things, You'll get to that empty nest stage where the kids are gone and it's just you two left and you don't even know that other person anymore. Number two, your parents are aging and you've reversed roles and you're taking care of them. That can wreak havoc on a marriage as well. It's a wonderful thing. It's an awesome thing to take care of your parents and to bless them the way that they have blessed you, basically, knowing that they are already grown and different things like that. But sometimes when parents age, they kind of reverse a little bit and they need more care, almost like children Some sometimes. Um, sometimes they are disabled and they need someone to be their hands and feet, going to the grocery store for them, um, making even decisions for them now. Um, so sometimes you can have to take total care of a parent and if you have not stayed connected or if you don't have a solid foundation of footing in your marriage that can be a troubling spot and your spouse that is not necessarily taking care of their parent but you are they have to be considerate and sympathetic to your new role as well and you kind of have to work together number three menopause <laughs> for the woman menopause can be life-changing 
there are things that are changing and going on in your body that you don't understand you've never been through and so it's going to be even harder for your spouse that man to understand as well uh it can be mood swings the hot flashes uh you know all the things that come along with menopause the sexual libido um just different things so you have to communicate during this time especially to your spouse so that they can be on the same page with you and know when symptoms or different things come, they may know how to react. Number four, for that man, it could be a midlife Christ stage. Uh, the middle age years, you know, just like with the woman, things are changing with him as well. Uh, you may not feel as attractive. Uh, you you feel like you, you just lost some things and you knew where you were going you know you had this ambition and drive and then you kind of hit a plateau when you get to midlife and you just you know kind of lose it a little bit and you start wanting to do different things or you think this is going to help you feel better or that or she will help you feel better which is not the case and it's just this midlife stage. So you have to communicate your changes as well to your wife so that she can help you along in this stage. And so you all can be on the same page as well. Number five, love languages. Yes, there's such thing as a love language. Everyone has it. I know it sounds a little funny and some people may not be up on it, but there is a book. Um, I think it's by Gary Smiley. I'm not sure. So Google it and look up whoever the author is so you can get that book. But love languages. Yes, my love language is words of affirmation. My husband's love language is acts of service. So knowing that he would, we, but we weren't versed on how to give what the other person needed, especially, you know, in the beginning. So when, People get married, they think whatever they need is what their spouse needs and vice versa. And women are, and men are different and they have vastly, I mean, just totally different needs. So I'm thinking because I like words of affirmation, well, surely he must like, you know, words of affirmation too, and which he does, but he doesn't need as much as I do. And he's thinking, you know, because he likes acts of service, Surely I must need or want, you know, acts of service done for me, which I love it. He's a, oh, he is a helper. He helps, he's, his gifting is helping. So he loves to help people and he, you know, can he do, he does, 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 does. That's just what he, he likes to help. So, but I didn't need an extensive amount. I wanted words of affirmation. The more words you can give me, the better. So. But we would get kind of tangled up in thinking, well, mine's is more important. And I'm sure he was thinking his was more important. No, whatever your spouse needs, and usually they clearly communicate it. So whatever it is, listen to them. Don't think that your what you need is more important and vice versa. They shouldn't think that what they need is more important. You are both to be concerned with fulfilling and meeting each other's needs. Number six, aging. A lot of the times this can wreak havoc too because you're changing, your body has changed, the way you look, sometimes the way you think, uh, your health has changed. Some health issues may come along that you didn't have before and it throws you for a loop, therefore throwing your spouse for a loop and your sex drive changes. So keeping in communication and just keeping a self check on yourself can help during this time. And number seven, this ties in a little bit to number six, but sometimes this affects women more than men, but I had to mention it because number seven is weight. And a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times when women gain excessive amounts of weight, it can make her tired, it can make her feel less attractive not that she is but sometimes she's feeling that way if she's not used to being that way and it can take a toll on her self-esteem um she's seeing herself different especially if she's trying to lose weight and she can't lose weight 
and she's wondering, well, how does how does my husband feel about this? And um, and it could be the same for a husband too. He could be feeling self conscious, although most men don't feel as self conscious as women. But uh, weight and and hair loss can be an issue too. A lot of women as well as men lose their hair due to alopecia or aging. And so these things can trigger low self esteem. Uh, can trigger you know, well, the way you look on the outside can make you feel different on the inside causing communication problems because there's sometimes things you don't want to talk about you don't want to face yourself so it's hard to talk about them with your spouse but it's important to address these issues too and number eight and this is almost in any stage of marriage but it is lack of funds money in your middle age, uh, if you have not taken the time to properly plan and, you know, talk with your spouse, uh, you know, reaching financial goals, when you come to your midlife area where you think you're going to maybe slack off a little bit as far as working those extra hours and, you know, different things like that in order to build a nest egg and your savings, if you haven't taken the time to plan that in your 20s and early 30s, when you get to your midlife stage, it can be a relationship drain because you don't have the funds to do what you want to do. In your midlife, you're thinking, oh, I'm going to do some, some things that, or we're going to do some things that we haven't gotten a chance to do, you know, when the kids were little, and we're going to travel more, whether it's with your family or just, you know, alone. I don't know if you're in the, the empty nest stage or if your children are, you know, bigger now. But a lot of people want to travel at this time, see the world, see, you know, just the United States um, or whatever country you may be in. Uh, do do more things, go out more, just enjoy things before you get older and can't do as many things. So when you are at this stage and you don't have enough money, you have a lack of funds, it can be a drain on a relationship because you're resenting each other sometimes or it's just that you didn't plan well. Number nine, you're bored or boring and that's not to slight anyone but sometimes you can get in a rut you can get as well as getting in a relationship rut you can get in a self rut it's important to have things that you like to do outside of the relationship as far as spending time with girlfriends or or your male counterparts your male friends as well um you want to have interests in the relationship that both of you all can do but you also want to have outside interests uh something that your spouse can maybe admire from afar because people want to be in relationship with an interesting person so if you're still you know up on sports or going to or doing sport events that's great if you're if you're you know invested in some kind of community service or you know whatever your interest is outside of your relationship a lot of times your parent your spouse might like to go along with you to some of these events is something new and different for from for them even though they're not in it personally themselves um also a part of not being boring is just finding stuff to do for yourselves just being talkative um you know with your spouse bringing up conversation about um events that are going on just being an interesting person you know sometimes we get into a rut and we don't talk to our spouse about different things we may complain about work or what have you but we don't have anything interesting to talk about so work on being an interesting person so you're not bored in the relationship don't get too busy outside of your relationship because that can be a divorce trigger as well you don't want your spouse to feel neglected you don't want to work too many extra hours at work you don't want to volunteer at everything at your child's school uh, you can't go to church every time the doors are open and you can't help in your community 24 7 so leave some room for your spouse a lot of room for your spouse actually but you don't want your spouse to feel neglected number 10 thinking that the grass is greener on the other side it's not your grass will be just as green and just as lovely if you mow and water your grass too so take time, invest in your spouse, invest in yourself, invest in your relationship, and you'll have a healthy relationship too. 
Okay, so now let's look at some ways to keep your marriage healthy. And I won't say divorce proof. I think that's a little bit extreme. But there are ways that you can minimize divorce in your marriage. Number one, it is communication. And a lot of people say, well, we talk all the time. I told him this and I told her that. Talking and communicating are two different things. We don't have a problem voicing what we want, but most of us do have a problem with listening. A lot of times we don't hear what our spouse is saying because it's not one of our needs and we kind of downplay their needs thinking this is something they don't, they don't really need. But you cannot dismiss what your spouse needs or what they communicate to you that they need. If he tells you, you know, from the beginning, if you know his mama cooked all the time, more likely or not, he's going to want a woman that cooks. And if he has voiced this, honey, you need to pay attention to it. Uh, if she says she wants more romance and more compliments, please give it to her because you don't want her looking outside of the relationship for when that co-worker uh, or that, you know, whomever tells her that she's pretty and uh, that she's nice to talk to and different things like that. That can be a problem. So listen to each other. Number two, go on more dates. Be together a little more. Not necessarily invading each other's, you know, space necessarily, but being together creates a sense of community, com creates a sense of weeness or a team. When you do something that you both enjoy, it brings about some camaraderie between the two of you and it helps a lot. And number three, be fun. Um, talk about interesting things. Um, talk about things that your spouse might be interested in. And sometimes it's not always his interest, but sometimes they will get a kick just seeing you be excited about something. Also, you don't have to be overly adventurous to be fun. Um, one person might be, the other person may not be. Take for instance, I love going to amusement parks still. My husband does not and has never <laughs> liked amusement parks, but he will go with me. So, and, and he rides on some things, not everything, but um, it's fun just to have him there with me, enjoying some of the things. And if he's not enjoying it with me, he's having fun laughing at me or with me on some of the things that I do. So be fun, be a willing participant in some things that your spouse likes to do because even though they're not participating in everything with you, they're still there and you're still enjoying each other. Number four, decide to be invested. Decide that this thing is going to work. It's not always a feeling. Uh, we get that mixed up in our early dating stages and early stages of marriage when we get those butterfly feelings and things like that. Yes, that's still fun to have and we still have those at you know in the middle age, but it's the decision. It's not always a feeling. Some people say, well, I don't feel in love and I don't feel like doing this and she don't make me feel and he don't make me feel like that. Sometimes the decision brings about the feeling decide that oh my goodness we're going to have a good day today decide that we're going to do something fun today decide that i love this person i'm sticking in for the long haul and we're going to make this work and that decision will bring on those feelings and number five keep folk out of your marriage and when I say that, I don't mean that you never let anybody know anything because there are some people who can help you and that are for your marriage. You don't want to exclude everybody. Just like when they say uh, raising children, it takes a village. Sometimes it takes a village for a marriage too because these days and times, it's hard. So don't exclude everybody. And you know, you're a team within yourself, but not necessarily a, an island alone. So... Those people that, you know, are naysayers against your marriage, sometimes it's your own family members, unfortunately, not always, but sometimes. You don't want to tell your in-laws everything, and you don't want to tell your friends everything. Uh, if you hit a rough rough patch and, you know, you don't want to, and I can understand that, you know, we've hit, hit rough patches before. It's like you don't want people you know to know certain things. Um, sometimes 
people will want to go to marriage counseling, but they don't want their pastor to know that they are going through that, even though that's what he's there for. Uh, but so what, whomever, you know, let someone know. It doesn't have to be someone you know. Sometimes you can go um, seek help from someone, you know, that we have the internet now. You know, you can call long distance. You can do long distance uh, counseling nowadays. So someone that will invest in your marriage and want to see you succeed, please do let them in. And lastly, but surely not least, consult the manual. And yes, I mean the Bible. I mean God's word. God instituted marriage. God created marriage. So why would you go outside of God to fix a marital problem? It's all in here. It's all in here. So consult God's word. Uh, it'll tell you how to live with according to knowledge with your wife. Wives, it'll tell you how to respect your husband or to respect your husband. It's all in here. All right, guys. So I hope you've learned something. Um, I hope that something has has jump started within you that this thing can't work so don't give up keep pushing keep peddling in that marriage and if you want to help someone else there are three things that i would like for you to do share this video that's one there may be somebody out there on your facebook snapchat instagram twitter that needs this information just as much Number two, like this video because when YouTube sees that you like this video or, you know, engaging, you know, comment below. When YouTube sees that, they'll promote this video. And I want as many people to know that marriage is doable. And I know you do too. So like this video. And number three, hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell. That way, anytime I upload a video, you'll be notified. And you'll see all the exciting things going on here at Tracy's Place. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I love you. And see you next time right back here on Tracy's Place. Bye.